Hello, this is Kerry Shoes with MathWorks, and in this video, I'm going to show how to make block diagram simplifications in Simulink. Um, I'm not going to be driving all the math, but I will do everything I can do to make it as intuitive as possible, where I'm using Simulink as my executable PowerPoint like Canvas. Uh, so, in that sense, I'm using Simulink as a not only as a simulation tool to test out the theory uh, or to confirm it, but also just as importantly for learning, I'm using Simulink as a visual communication tool here. So here we go. Uh, the goal is to we're going to have some starting point block diagram like I have here represented. I've got kind of two loops here, kind of a smaller loop and an outer loop. And I want to take this and simplify it. I want to simplify it such that we end up with just one feed forward path and then a unity negative feedback path, kind of a classic control system look. So what I'm shooting for is, uh, let's see, let's look at down here, something like this, something with a feed forward path and then unity negative feedback. So I'm gonna make a number of modifications here, which you see as I scroll up and down the screen in order to do that. Now, again, I'm not going into the theory. There's a very good uh, video. There's probably lots of good videos on this topic, but the one I'm gonna recommend is by Brian Douglas. I'm brought up his YouTube channel here where he goes into this, uh, goes into much detail on this, this uh, very topic, simplifying and modifying block diagrams. So I strongly rec recommend you check out his channel for more in-depth uh, theory and on controls in general. Okay, so let's, uh, let's continue this march from the starting point block diagram to something uh, simpler. Now, I do want to point out that this may be the way a system is physically implemented. Uh, but when we are analyzing a system, sometimes it's helpful to put it into another form. So that's what we're doing here. We're not saying that we're going to end up implementing the system like this, but we may put it in that form for simulation purposes or for analysis purposes. So just keeping that in mind, the, the why of you know what we're doing here. OK, and spoiler alert, the transfer function of the system from uh, input to output y over u is as follows here, a times c over 1 minus a times b plus a times b times c, c times d. I uh, should also, just to be thorough about it and clear, these a, b, c, d systems are not a, b, c, d state space matrices. Uh, these are just variable names uh, that denote a linear time invariant system as described using control systems toolbox. So what I did here was I have a MATLAB script, I call it preload function. I created a frequency variable Z. So this is a discrete time implementation. Uh, and then I created A, this is an integrator. This is a delay um, with a, a gain and it's and negated. This is a uh, single pole, zero, uh, single, uh, single pole zero single zero uh system and this is just a small um you know scalar gain factor for d all right uh so that's it for the uh the system now it should run it for starters and just see what the system does when you use these particular components and connect them together in said configuration and then you get a slightly under damp system you see it starts at zero we're, we're conducting a step response here uh essentially because we're going up to one at time zero and at the input, and then we're monitoring the output and you can see overshoot, undershoot, and then settles down to around 2.6 volts. So we got a small gain at DC of about 2.6. All right, uh, I should also point out that uh, although I'm implementing this here in discrete time or Z domain, that there's really uh, all the techniques apply to continuous time or Laplacian domain as well. All right, so the first thing I want to do is move that. Uh, if I scroll down here, I want to move this. I want to get rid of this loop over here in this summing junction. I want to bring it all into one loop. So in order to do that, I'm going to bring the C to this side of that junction, that branch point. And in order to do that, I still have to be careful to preserve all the signals in my system. I cannot, uh, the, the, key, the key signals at like summing junctions or the output. So if the input to the summing junction here is a times x and then a c d x, of course, with a minus sign. I have to maintain that down here. And, and the way to do that is I have to compensate for c by multiplying by 1 over c. The output is still a times c times x, a times c times x. 
And the other input to the uh, summing junction is ACDX. And sure enough here, we've got ACDX. So we're good. We've preserved the output and we've preserved the inputs to the summing junction. And then everything else is fine. That's step one in the modification. Step two is I'm going to combine these two together. Just as an experiment, I want to get, I don't want these two feedback paths. So I'll just combine it into one. And that's easy enough. You can just subtract them since we just need to take into account the minus sign here. One over C minus D combined into one block. It's easy. You just merge them together. That's still not quite what we want for the end game. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth here. I'm going to split it into two separate feedback paths from the output. So one here, one here. And since now I'm going to take the B, distribute it over the one over C minus D. So you get B over C and minus B times D. And that's what we have here. Notice I just took into consideration the minus sign on the D on the uh, input summing junction. Now that I've got two feedback paths, I want to get rid of one of them, which is the B over C. And this is on positive feedback form. So if you have this kind of structure, if I have g which is a times c and i have h which is b over c positive feedback i can combine them to this format right here g over one minus g times h and that's going to be on the next step and that is right here okay so now on the next step finally this is pretty straightforward I'm, i want to uh, create a single uh I, I just want unity negative feedback so i'm going to fold the b times d into the feed forward and that's, again, a straightforward operation. You can do the theory where you basically equate the transfer functions of this and this. And you end up with a feedforward transfer function, which is g over 1 plus g times h minus g. Again, if you want to derive that on a piece of paper, you can. Or you can go to Brian's videos that I referred to. And you can, you know, you can see how it's done there. But essentially, these two things are equivalent from an input-output perspective. So now we've got a single loop and negative feedback. And you know you can almost essentially write down now the transfer function of that by inspection, since it's just this over 1 plus this. <laughs> Pretty simple. That's why we always like this format, because you can write down the transfer function from input-to-output by inspection. Again, it's the feed forward over 1 plus the feed forward because the feedback is just, well, unity. All right, so and now uh, for the final thing here, I'll point out that it's tempting to go to this kind of format. In other words, if you want to, you could say, I'm gonna take this feedback term, I'm going to invert it, and I'm gonna put it here, and then I'll make this negative feedback here. So you might say, if you, so if you compare here, look, I basically took this, I should move it up just slightly, I took this, moved it to here, inverted it, made this uh, negative feedback or just unity feedback. And that works. Mathematically, it works. But in terms of functionality, implement, implement realizability, it doesn't work. Uh, you'll get, you'll run into realizability problems. For instance, if I take this, put it here, no complaints, but I haven't inverted it yet. That's not the correct transfer function. So I could take this and say, well, let's just make it one over B times D. Let's try that. And it will say, sorry, can't do that. The LTI block cannot be used for models with more zeros than poles. It's not realizable. So we just can't get there from here. So I'll say, okay, cancel, delete, and that won't work. Right. So uh, just a note of caution, if you were to try to do that for anything other than the scalar use case, the scalar case, you could, of course, make that modification. So now at the end of the day, we've gone from this where we started and to this, which is a far more, you know, easier to analyze system, in spite of the fact that you may, you probably won't implement it that way in the actual physical system. All right, that's all really for this video. I'm going to do another video on this same topic of block diagram modifications, except in the next one, I'm going to use a nonlinear system and show how there's special care that must be taken when you're working with nonlinear system when you're making uh, such modifications, uh, block diagram modifications. Okay, thank you very much for tuning in. Until then.